Hey, we are here for another episode of the Rock Life Podcast. How are you all doing today? Hey, today we are going to be jumping into our new series that we started here at the Rock Church and Word Outreach Center, so stay tuned all the way to, through. My name is Antonio. I'm here with Pastor Dan. Hey, everybody. How you doing, Pastor Dan? I'm well. I'm well. Doing good. Um, this weekend, we kicked off a new series. Yeah. And it was great, and so we are going to get into that, and I'm, I'm really excited about that. I know we... Again, it's always really encouraging. I want to say I heard of at least two or three people that came up to me uh, over the weekend. Again, we get to shake hands at the doors and yeah. they hey, hearing the podcast encouraged. So, again, I know we've talked about that. That's some of our gauge sometimes, the feedback that yes. we get. Love to hear. Um, and if you have comments or questions, even, we would love yes. to hear from you guys on social media, email, mm -hmm. backdoor, whatever. You yeah. know, we would love to, uh, you know, discuss things, especially if you have questions about the message. You yeah. know, we're. we're unwrapping the sermons and in some ways unpackaging things that we don't get to talk about during the sermon, which has right. kind of been fun. It is. I, I enjoy it because yeah. we always study more than we preach. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a, a ton of stuff that we don't get yeah. to. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you do have any questions or, you know, hey, can you give me more on this or, or whatever, you know, we'd love to hear from you guys and, and be able to encourage you and serve you well. Yep. Uh, I love it. Pastor, I am in a sweatshirt. I don't yes. know if you realize that. Uh, a couple things, if you're watching. This is our RockCon sweatshirt, but it really is across the board. Uh, we got these. We did a rerun. Oh, did you? So that's encouraging. We I, I know we sold out at the conference. So we did. I mean, that's that's a great design. I love the, and, um, the Holy Ghost yeah. in the R making yep. the C. And I, I mean, it's just... Right? That's cool. Yeah, really neat. And we had these only in the... The pink fuchsia color. Yes. And now we have them in the Navy. More manly for the Navy. Yes. Huh? So I'm rocking my crew sweatshirt. Good job. Uh, so that's to announce about that we did a rerun, but also that it's sweater weather. Is it? It. I, well, maybe not. Is I'm, it though? <laughs> I love how you said that. It's supposed to be. And I'm, I'm, I'm well, trying to inform my mind. October. So, yeah, I mean, the rest of the world is right. probably experiencing <laughs> that, but uh, not us. So it is technically fall here technically, in 2024. Yes. Don't know when you're listening to this. Um, technically autumn, fall time. You, this is not your favorite time of the year. I'm a summer guy through and through. I, that's part of the reason why I'm in Southern California. Yeah. I've traveled the world, yeah. and I just love right. California, specifically Southern California. Um, you know, some people want four th four seasons. I mm -hmm. like the one that I get. You that's know. true. Yeah, I, I can yeah. I can see that. I guess you know, when like the hot prolonged prolonged heat is just like. Oh, I love to it. To me, I'm just like, come on now. I need some cold weather. Nah. At least the mornings have been cool, though. Yeah, they have been. The mornings know it's fall, it seems and, like. And I can appreciate a brisk morning. Yeah. You know, um, but I don't know. There's something to me about the heat. I, I'd much rather be hot than cold. Right. And I don't know why that is. Um, I, you know, pro some would probably say it's because I don't have a lot of meat well, on my bones. Well, let's say you're thin, you know, you're <laughs> fit. We'll say fit, not skinny. We'll Thank say you. you're fit. I, I like that word. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I've always loved summer. Uh, always enjoyed the heat. Always enjoyed, you know, water sports and right. things like that. And, and uh, being at the beach. Everything that we get to do as Californians, you know, hiking, all that good stuff, you know. That's true. If it's too cold, I, I don't know. I just, my, my my body literally shuts down. I remember one time I was with the kids. Uh, we took them to Disneyland and yeah. it got so cold and I had a coat. Yeah. But I was just done. And I looked at Jessica uh, and I was yeah. just like, I've. I've got to get out of here. Right. You know, it was just like my body's shutting down. Cause like stiff, stiffen up everything. Yeah, yeah. My mind is yeah. like, I don't, I don't know why uh, the yeah. cold affects me that way, yeah. but just like, I, I couldn't think straight. I couldn't, you know, I, I was just done. Well, that's true. And if I get my, my ears get really cold and then like it freezes my head a little bit, maybe yeah. that's what it is. I, yeah. I don't think that's a thing, but Head freeze, brain freeze. Well, so then that kind of answers the question I was going to ask. Uh, what I was going to ask was what are some, fall or autumn activities that you enjoy or well you know while there's not a lot i do you know many people know that i like photography and so the fall leaves are always a great thing uh, i love landscapes um years ago we traveled up to mammoth and they had the, i was just gonna say that i mean the aspens changing yeah. color yes. and then literally there's uh, rows of trees that are where the water comes down the mountains mm -hmm. and the trees all turn orange and it looks like a river of fire coming down wow. the mountain it's pretty pretty cool so right. Um, those are fun things. I love hiking, so mm -hmm. I love getting outdoors and that sort of a thing. This is a great time to go to like Joshua Tree. Yeah. If you like the desert and big rocks it and is things. It's really pretty, yeah. So um, that's a great spot. Um, and, I, and I do appreciate, you know, even though it's fall, it's still in like the 70s, 80s. Yeah. 
And so, um, you know, anything outside, I'm just down for, you know, so um, bike riding, hiking, walking, yeah. paddleboarding, golfing, you yeah, know. That, man, we really do get. We're, we're pretty spoiled. Yeah, we're pretty spoiled. True. So because even in our cold, I'm quoting air quotes cold. It doesn't really prohibit any of our nah, hobbies. Not that much. And if you want snow, you can drive up to it in the mountains yeah. and things yeah. like that. So, you know, but uh, but yeah, fall activities. I, I like all that, um, you know. Yeah. I think about how, you know, I, I see on social media, like people putting away their lawnmowers for the winter. And I'm just like, what's that? You know, like, yeah, no, I, like, we don't have to do that. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know, I don't have to adjust things on our hoses. And I, I think maybe every other week. And, yeah. you know, we kind of do right. less water. Right. Uh, just no, but you know how they put people put. Oh, I got like, you. Yeah. Change out their yeah, ho Like, I don't have to do. No, we, we don't have that kind of extreme yeah. hot and cold to where we have to do that right. stuff. So. Yeah, my, my parents used to own a little cabin up in Big Bear, and they had to winterize it and all that. Oh, yeah, winterizing. But, there you go. Um, yeah, no, I mean, down here. Psh. Summarize? Uh, uh, anyways. That sounds like I the <laughs> end of the podcast. <laughs> let's summarize this thing. Okay. <laughs> well, um, Pastor Dan, let's jump into it because maybe people are tired of our banter. I like our conversations. I'm, I'm glad we like it, yeah. Um, but I don't know if y'all do, but. You're not in the room with us, so I mean, yeah. again, if you if there's a subject you want to hear about, yeah, and put it in the comments. We should do another live recording. That might be fun. That'd be fun. Um, so, Pastor Dan, we are kicking off again because this is the whole idea of the podcast right now is to discuss and go into topics from and, and feedback from our message. Yeah, our, our son. This is supplemental. We want to encourage you to listen to our weekend messages. That is another podcast. Rock Church and World Outreach Center has the weekend messages, and you can hear all the podcasts of all the messages, uh, and that's a great resource. Ways that you know, prayer, read your Bible, sermons are awesome. Yeah, uh, and then this podcast again is going to be specific to our weekend messages. So we started a new series within with, I, and I'm telling you, within I say Romans, this every week yeah. within Romans. We're in our book series, but within the series are actions and attitudes, and I, I thought you just kicked it off. So well, because I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking just, you know, this podcast has been a very practical approach, but the entire message was, I was even just thinking about questions for it. I'm like, it was a very practical message. Very. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that was intentional. That yeah. was by design. Yeah. Um, I think this second part, it's, we're going to dive deeper now cool. that we've got those foundations. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like anything. If you get the foundations down then the rest of it is is leaning on that foundation right. right so i think that's where we had to get that because mm -hmm. one precedes the other your attitudes precede your actions yeah and if we get the attitude right oh that's good then we'll get the action right i love that see that now that paints okay that's i see that i see where you're going yeah because so the the, the points were position yourself to learn position yourself to do position yourself to grow which i almost see you do the first two and you're gonna grow Right, yes. like you do the first two, and and the third will come. Yeah, and I think the emphasis of that third one was more about being patient with yourself, yeah. because we all we're not going to get it right yeah. every time, you know, and and we're going to stumble, we're going to fall, and so we need to to be patient with ourselves while mm -hmm. we grow, because God's being patient with yeah. us. You know, we saw that even in the wrath of God and and how God's patiently giving us time to repent and that sort of thing. But God also is a father. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like with your girls, you right. know, you got little girls. It, when they were learning how to walk, yeah. you weren't like, oh, gosh, you yeah. fell again. Right. You know, like right. you, you just, no, get up. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's mm -hmm. try again, you know. Yeah. And so I, I think that people don't understand God's not frustrated with us like we get frustrated with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we, we've got to give ourselves the grace mm -hmm. to be able to grow and to learn and, and and really, I guess mature is yeah. a good word for yeah. that. Yeah. So that's really where the emphasis of that is. But yes, by the, by doing the learning process and doing process, mm -hmm. you're going to grow. You're going yeah. to mature. So yeah, that's a, a you know outcome that's going to happen. Well, even you know you, the, you use the term positioning, right, or posturing, right? Yes. Like putting yourself in these positions or places to have opportunities. It wasn't just go learn, go do. It's position yourself. Yeah, that's the attitude. Right. Right. The the attitude we said again precedes the action. So if you're if you're not positioned to mm -hmm. learn, you'll never learn. Ah, see that okay. So the attitude kind of is our mental approach. Yeah. So that that's where when I when I use the the root of what the the attitude is, it it 
surprised me when mm. I was studying this out because it was talking about art mm. and about sculpture and things like that. Yeah. The attitude was literally the position that they were putting the model or putting uh, the yeah, painting yeah. or, you know, whatever it was that oh, they wow. were doing. That was the attitude. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if you've got, you know, you can remember some of the classic, you know, yeah. uh, Renaissance, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, where they've got um, even God casting Adam and Eve out of yeah. the, the garden. There's there's very famous paintings of that. And what, what's the the attitude of God? His his hand is out. Right. They're being pointed out uh, of Eden. Yeah, right. Yes, That's the, the attitude yeah, of God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, the attitude of Adam and Eve. Their heads are down. They're covering okay. their faces. They're walking away with their backs turned to God out of the garden. That's their attitude. Yes. Okay. So it, it's it's an interesting thing as a visual it? person. Like I'm seeing it, right? Like I'm yes. seeing attitude as a positioning. That that and that's why I said posture yourself yeah. or position yourself, right? Mm -hmm. To learn. So yeah. so that position, that attitude is, mm -hmm. I, I'm ready. Right. I, I want to learn. You yes. know. Um, okay, God. You know, uh, you take the position of a student. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're seated at God's feet. Okay. What do you want to say? You know. Right. That's where in the morning when you get up and you read your Bible the the attitude is, I, I'm approaching this not just to tick a box mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. oh, I got to read. No, God, I want to learn. Right. And and I'm expecting that as I read this, you're going to speak to me, open my mind, open yeah. my heart to receive what it is that the Spirit is speaking and, and help me to understand these things so right. that I can... I can learn what it is that you have for me. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the humble position that God exalts, right? Yeah. It's the position that says, I'm not taking the highest place. I don't know everything. I, I, I need God to come speak to me and teach me about these yeah. things. So that's the attitude that we take is the yeah. attitude of a student, of a learner, yeah. humble. I, I'm just, you know, I, I'm coming to learn. I'm coming to, to grow. Well, one of the reasons why I felt it was so practical is because the way I thought about it as, you know, because there are people in our congregation that hear this message that are great at what they do. Sure. Whether it be, you know, their craftsmen and women, their chefs, cooks, teachers, instructors, mechanics, where they took the time, electricians, whatever it is, they took the time to do these things. They went through these steps. Yeah. They trained, they learned, they grew, they did. And so such is so in our walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. So in the same way that you did that in your profession or in your hobbies, right? I like woodworking. I'm not the greatest, but you know, you watch YouTube videos, you want, you know, you try, you learn, you grow, yeah. you mess up. A lot of growth comes out of messing up. Right. Yeah. Right. And some of those lessons almost have to be done, you know, in, until I tried it and, and did it. But I did notice for myself and probably for many others, sometimes those mess ups can take you out. Sure. And that and that brings us back to point number three, right. right? Positioning yourself to grow. That you're not ready to give up. Yes. When you mess up. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that that's the beautiful thing about the grace of God, the beautiful Amen. thing about the mercy of God, and the beautiful thing about uh God's patience with us as a father is that as we're learning, mm -hmm. as we're doing, yeah, we're not gonna get it up right all the time because we still live in this fleshly body. Yeah. Right. And we're not perfected yet. There will come a day. Right. I'll get a new body. The sin nature will be gone. I'll see as I, I've seen and know as I'm known. Yeah. You know, there's going to be some amazing things that take place. I'll get that resurrected body. And uh, and, you know, it's going to be a different scenario. Yeah. At that point. Now. Different. Right. The flesh gets involved. My mind gets involved when the two link up together. My yeah. goodness, I'm carnal. <laughs> uh, you know, so so that's where we have to stay in the spirit. That's mm -hmm. where we have to stay learning. Yep. That's where we have to stay growing. And and then when we mess up, we have the maturity to say, I'm not going to allow this to take me out. Yeah. It's good to feel bad about your sin. It's good right. to feel bad about making a mistake. Right. Yeah. Because then you, you're going to not want to do it again. Right. They're right? gauges. Right. They're, th they're gauges. Yes, for us. absolutely. And, and we have to pay attention to those things, mm -hmm. because if you don't feel bad when you yeah. screw up, there's something wrong inside, yeah. right? Yeah. So we got to keep our conscience tender and and open to God and not calloused and, and you know, oh, I just messed up again, I'm out, you know, whatever. That that we stay in that position that says, okay, I messed up. Oh, I hate that feeling. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that again, but I'm going to learn. I'm going to grow. Like you said, the, yeah. you know, first time you're using a router right. and you, you yeah. totally screw up this, yeah. the edges of this thing and, yeah. and, and you made a terrible mistake, you know, yeah. and you're like, okay, and burned the wood, all that yeah, kind of stuff, yeah. and spent all this time just to have it at the end. Right. Yeah, I messed up, right? Yeah, yeah. So what do you do? You get a new piece of wood, 
exactly. you start over and you do right. it again. You try it again, yeah. you know, and maybe this time before you do it on the actual wood, mm -hmm. you have a practice piece of wood that you're right. doing the edges right. until you get it to where you're not burning it. You, it looks nice. Mm -hmm. You go, okay, that's it. And then you do it on the wood. Right. right. And, and not every mess up that we encounter is going to be sin. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I think that's the other thing too, is sometimes people, you know, sin is one thing, trying something for God and not, accomplishing it yeah that that's another thing you know there are things that we can do that maybe aren't sinful but they aren't productive mm -hmm. uh they aren't sinful but they aren't uh you know where we need to be you mm -hmm. know um and, and and i think that's where pastor jim used to say i'd much rather fail trying something for god yeah than succeed at not doing anything yeah right yep and, and that's the growth process that's the maturity that says at least we're doing something mm -hmm. You know, so um, so yeah, that that's that's the position though. That's that's the heart that says, I'm I'm gonna get out there and try it. I have the right attitude that says I'm in this. Yeah. Well, let's th let's throw in this. There's a, another thought on top of this is, on top of the beautiful layout that God gives us, He also gives us and models discipleship. Yes. He places us in family or community, mm -hmm. and oftentimes fellowship. So yeah. now, if you want to look at the practical, there are things called fellowship in academia. You take fellowships where you're, you're basically coming, you're within a sustained program where you're coming right, alongside yeah. learning these things. You know, it's if I took a training or a class on woodworking, yes, I would still mess up. Yes, I would still make mistakes. Yes, I would still have to do the learning and the growing and the doing. But I would do that within the context of with someone. Right. And that's another element. Guys, we're not alone. No. We, we are not alone. You know, we are a church. We are a community. We are an ecclesia. We are a gathering. Yeah. And there are people and we are. It's it's why we don't just listen to the podcast and go home. You know, I, I, I'm grateful you listen to the podcast. I hope you have some takeaways. But man, I, I, I in my own life and I know that you through stories you've had and you can even add more now of in your learning and in your doing and in your growing, a lot of that contribution came from Pastor Jim, a father, a brother in Christ, mm -hmm. sharpening each yeah. other, yeah. saying, hey, man, I, I still remember when uh, uh, Pastor Joseph, hey, man, I, I see your eyes wandering. We were young single men. Uh -huh. I see your eyes wandering. What are you doing? Like, oh, man, I'd never been called out before. Oh. But that was in the context of Christian brotherhood. Right. In my mind, before this, it was like this is what we all do. Mm -hmm. But in the context, it was like, oh, it was a it was a call out, right? And it was in community, and it's like, hey, we're, let's be better, right? Yeah, let's grow, yeah, let's learn, and let, let's let's do. Turn your eyes down, Wh whatever yeah. it might be. You yeah. walk through these things, you walk through life, in in these things, and we're getting better. Absolutely, yeah. And that's the neat thing about. Uh, being lifelong learners is that in the context of community, you, you're going to be better because you're sharpening one another, you know? And like you mentioned, as a young man, there's certain things that we deal with. As mm -hmm. older men, there's other things that right. we deal with, right? Yep. And I think that's where as we as we mature, mm -hmm. as we grow, um, you know, there's new levels, new devils, mm -hmm. new things that we're going to encounter, things that we're going to come across. Um, you know, I think about it, you talked about people that are, are good at what they do yeah. in, as far as their work or their mm -hmm. occupation, that sort of a thing. Um, my brother works in the healthcare industry mm -hmm. and uh, he has ongoing learning because obviously mm -hmm. as they learn new things about the science of what yeah. they do, they're rolling out these new practices yep. and new, new understandings and things like that. And so he's required to go to those trainings. You know, and, and I think sometimes people think of Christianity as, oh, I've read the Bible, mm -hmm. I have prayed, mm -hmm. I have witnessed, I have right. gone on a missions trip, or, yeah. you know, sometimes people do everything that they think that, that can be done, and they think the only thing left for them to do is, like, pastor a church, you know, mm -hmm. and they end up getting out of the church because they feel like, well, I've done it all, and what, what else is there, and that, that must be the pinnacle is being a pastor. It's not the pinnacle. Right. You know, this is a lifelong process mm -hmm. that we're continuing to grow and continuing to to mature in. And as we learn and as we do, there's more to learn. You know, there's more to experience. There's more to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Not just the religious side. And, and that's where in obviously Romans, Apostle Paul's talking about the religious. Yeah. You know, he's, he's shifted from the ungodly 
to the moralist, and now the religious is on the stand, and he's saying, you think you're out of this just because you, you've got the religion side of this down? Right. You know, I, I right. prayed, I read the Bible, I went to Bible college, I did this, I did that, you know. Yeah. We check all these boxes, and we think, well, what's left, you know? Mm-hmm. And God's saying, you don't, you don't got it. Yeah. It's a lifelong learning. Yeah. It's something that you need to understand that you're doing for the long haul. Yeah. And because of that, you're always going to be growing. Well, let's add now. Let's add this. You gave me another thought. Let's add a fruit component. Yeah. That along the way there is going to be fruit. Yes. In other words, and I and I speak to myself and people like me who like the idea of checking a box and going through. I did the learn. Okay, Pastor Dan, you gave the three points. I did those. Right. Now the next thing, right? But there's going to be fruit along the way, mm-hmm. right? As we are learning. And then doing, we're going to be growing. In that growth, there's fruit. Right. We stop. Enjoy the fruit of great relationships. Mm-hmm. Enjoy the fruit of finding success, whether it be relationally, financially, spiritually. And you're stopping, breathing it in. Kind of, um, it makes me think of, you know, your your hobbies. You go to a lake where you in your photography, you are seeing the fruit of a change of seasons. Yeah. Right. And you're stopping to take breaths. And if we don't enjoy fruit of life that God, what a gift that God gives us that there are there's seed time and harvest yeah then it will just be I have to get to the pinnacle I got there and it all seemed what well, is all nothing right it is Solomon that is like I wonder if Solomon did you not enjoy the fruit within your <laughs> 700 wives you know like yeah. is there not a time where you just ever took it in and maybe uh, I wonder if there's the elements of the the taking in the fruit that we're see- seeing in life and then if there isn't fruit then maybe we're not doing it well. Is fruit a gauge? Is that a is that a fair? Maybe that's a question. I you have. know, is Jesus a- actually said that we're to be fruit inspectors, right? right? And and talked about that. You'll know them by their fruits. Exactly. And so, yeah, absolutely, I believe it's a gauge. I think right. it's something that that if God is looking for it, we ought to be looking for right. it, right? Right. And if you're not producing fruit, then it's time to go back and learn. Mm-hmm. Amen. Come on. Right. What yeah. am I doing that that is not producing, or or is there something choking the word? Is mm-hmm. there uh, you know, a heat source, some sort of persecution that's stopping me from taking root. Mm-hmm. Uh, is the devil involved in this? Right. Is he stealing away that seed? What 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 is happening in my life? And and go back to learning. You know, um, I, I like the sport of golf. I'm mm-hmm. not great at it. Uh, you know, but um, I remember I someone told me just take one lesson. You know, yeah. and then practice that. And then once you get that down, go and take the second lesson. Well, I took one lesson, and the guy took a long time just to talk to me about my hands. Mm. And that was just it. It was just about hands, you know. Yeah. And he said, when you come back, you can do this, you can do this, you can do that. But when you come into the center, I want your hands right here. And it was like, oh, you know. Yeah. And so what I would do is I'd take back, and then when i come through, I would stop to see where my hands were. Right. You know, and there were times where my hands would be like this, mm-hmm. which opens up the club face, which means I'm going to get a slice, which right. I, I normally do. I drop <laughs> the shoulder, whew, you yeah. know, I'm on the right side. Um at least I'm always on the right <laughs> side. But uh, it was it was part yeah. of that thing that, hey, why am I not hitting straight? Mm-hmm. Here's the reason why. When you come through that center, you want that club face to be absolutely flat so that it hits it where you're aimed. Right. Right? So that one lesson, that one thing was what I've been working on mm-hmm. for I don't know how many years since I had the lesson. I, right. I tried getting a second lesson, by the way. Yeah. Dude was doing inventory, <laughs> couldn't make it, yeah. forgot, double booked himself. And so oh, I man. ended up never getting the second lesson. But uh, I'm still trying to get my hands where I'm flat in the center. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, though? Yeah, it, yeah. It's, right. I, I think that's the thing. What is the fruit? What, what is the product? Mm-hmm. And if it's not the right product or right. there is no product, yeah. then, okay, God, give me a lesson. Yeah. What what am I doing wrong? He might Come say, on. "Hey, what are you doing with your hands? Yeah. What are you doing with your mind? What are you doing with your eyes?" What that's you a whole word, ears? Pastor. Yeah. That that's a whole word. Why? Because people get frustrated because I did the checklist. Yeah, they're expecting on to the next season yeah. when they never inspected the fruit or the fruit that you had was bad. Right. So there's something in the growth process that didn't work, but yet we fast forward to the next season. I did this. You said to do this, mm-hmm. and I wonder if maybe. Out of if it's if it's religion within us, our natural in, as just humans tendencies to want to check boxes or whatever that would have us to skip past and think that we have to rush. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, I get this. My, my parents both did. Um, they did work in the fields and they would just 
I don't know if you see now on social media, there's these videos of uh, farm workers just kind of filling their baskets and they throw the baskets up on the truck and you get paid on the baskets, how many basket fills. Oh, wow. But what you don't do is you don't pick each one, throw it away if it's bad. Like you're just yeah. bringing all the fruit in. Whatever you can get. But that's not our walk with God, right? I mean, I, I mean, we do pick, but we if if you were to notice at the end of the day, because you have to stop, observe, take in, and you saw these baskets full of fruit and they was it was rotten, mm. like you would have to identify. But then you want to wake up the next day. You you picked a whole load of rotten fruit, and then the next day you just want to do it again. Yeah, and and it's interesting that you said they get paid by the basket, right? See, I think that's the thing is, what is the reward? Right. What is the wage mm-hmm. that we're looking for? Come on. Uh, and, and that's where religion, mm-hmm. you know, specifically back to Romans, what we're talking about, religion gives you a false positive in the sense that your yeah. wage mm-hmm. is expected that, hey, I did all this. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yep. Right? Yep. But God never says that it, it's by doing in the doing all this, yeah. that you're going to receive salvation, produce fruit, all that kind of stuff, right? It, it's more in the faith. Yep. And it's more in the abiding. And, and you know, gosh, man, I tell you, I used to read chunks of the Bible. I, I often tell my, my Bible reading journey started when I was 15. I was in church, got saved. I'd been in church all my life, but finally gave my heart to the Lord at 15. Yeah. And I was probably that... Yeah classic altar call person you know yeah. you've raised in church your parents told you you're a christian mm-hmm. all, all mm-hmm. the stuff that we say that was yeah. me i was leading worship in my youth group yeah. before i was ever saved uh but there came a moment where i realized i need to get saved and my pastor at the time challenged our church he said uh, if you read three chapters a day five on sundays you read through the bible in a year i devoured it you mm-hmm. know i went through it and read it in eight months and then started over and and it's just been a lifelong journey well came to the point I started coming to The Rock and was dating Jessica, and obviously Jessica's dad was the pastor at The Rock at the Mm -hmm. time, Pastor Jim, and so I remember um, being at the house, and we were having dinner and that sort of a thing, and he came in from outside with his Bible under his his arm, and he said, ah, I just read Nehemiah. It's been years. Yeah. Blew my mind. Right. I was like, wait a second, hold on. You're a pastor, and you just said it's been years since you read one of the books of the Bible. That didn't compute. It was like, right. you're supposed to read those every year, <laughs> like at right. least once. You have maybe to do the whole Bible in a year. Two, yeah. <laughs> three times a year. And depending on how big your church is, the more you read. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so for his church, he right. should have yeah. been, you know, like six times in by that time. Right. You know, so I just, it blew my mind. <laughs> and, um, and, and he started to share, you know, I'm not a good reader. I have to read very slow. Oftentimes he would read with a dictionary mm-hmm. because he didn't understand the words. Wow. And so if he really wanted to understand what was being said, but that's why he had such deep, profound insights into the scriptures mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. was because he had to pull apart every little piece. Okay, what does sanctification mean? Right. All right, because yeah, I got to understand what this whole verse is saying, you know, and sometimes like the Apostle Paul, there's some run on sentences. Yeah, right. You know, he's a talker <laughs> he, <laughs> or pre- a writer. <laughs> preach for three hours yeah. and, you know. Dude falls out the window and dies. He hey, is man, a talker. It's an encourager oh, for, for preachers. Oh, for sure. 100%, man. <laughs> Did anyone die on your watch because you were going so long? Man. Yeah. Preached all night. <laughs> Raised the dude from the dead and went back to yeah. preaching. Like, seriously. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. so there's a lot to understand, so he'd have to break it down. But that was a turning point for me in my Bible reading because I started to slow down. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of the thing is that when you talk about abiding... It's not in the doing and the mm-hmm. activity and the rush. You know, I know that our second point was due, but at, at the same time, in your doing, it's it's even because you've learned right. and you're prepared and you're doing it in Him and you're doing it by faith. I mean, there's yeah. just still that that connectivity mm-hmm. that in your doing, you're not doing it alone. You're not right. doing it out of a religious experience. You're doing it because it's a product of mm-hmm. what you've learned. Mm-hmm. It's who you are. This is what I do. See, because yep. I'm a believer, this is what I do. It's yep. the product of what's gone on inside of me that is now producing this fruit, mm-hmm. right? And, and then, like you said, there, there may be things in there that rotten, right. do, doesn't doesn't make the cut, yeah. and that's where we grow, mm-hmm. right? Some things need to be pruned. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I love what it says. Um, Jesus said, any branch that doesn't bear fruit, my father... Uh, either prunes or um, right. some translations also talked about that he cleans it mm-hmm. or that he lifts it up. Yep. And, and I love that just because you think about the care of the vine dresser. Right. 
cleaning off the leaf so that the dirt's not on it and then lifting it up to, you know, the trellis or whatever right. it is. And, um, and that trellis was a, a stake. It was a straight pole like this. Mm-hmm. And, and that represents the word of God. Mm-hmm. You think about it, it's the, the measuring line, right? Right. It's the straight edge that we prop our lives up on, that if we're holding on to the truth of God's word, we're going to produce fruit because God has lifted right. us up to the, that, the stature mm-hmm. of his son, Jesus Christ, the yeah. word of God. And, and that's where we live. You know, that's, that's the attitude that says, I, I'm humble. Mm-hmm. I got to learn this. I, yeah. I got to do this. You know, I'm going to incorporate this in my life because I believe I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, but then I, as, I know I'm not going to be perfect at this, so I'm going to mature. I'm going to grow. And I'm going to continue to have that attitude that that is in this for the long haul. Right. That that's looking forward to production, not rushing production. Yeah. You know, not growth hormones and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. you know, six easy steps, and you know, <laughs> you're there. You've well, arrived. You you have you talked about how you have fruit trees in your yard. Yeah. There's been different seasons where some didn't bear fruit, whether it was this or that, and you might find like, oh man, this tree is dead, or this tree. Well, oh shoot, the irrigation is broken or, yeah. th- you know, there are, and so there is that inspection, yeah. inspecting of our fruit, identifying the challenges, what's wrong. Not so that you could bring shame to your tree, <laughs> 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 right? Shame on you tree, you know, it, so you can address those needs. Right. And so the same in our lives as, as we inspect the fruit of our lives, not to bring f- shame on us. Oh man, I keep messing up here. Well, what is, what's the issue? Oh, I keep messing up in this area because I still have these habits that I've not addressed. Mm-hmm. I, oh, I, I'm, I'm still messing up in this area of maybe it's lust, lust. Well, you're open. You keep this door open. You keep watching those shows that yeah. even in and of themselves, they're not, it's not like it's anything crazy, but you know what it is or music. You allow certain music and like, oh yeah. shoot, let me, those let me check these irrigations. Let me check this system. Yeah. The, and if, and if we weren't inspect or check, then we wouldn't be able to see or know what the challenge or problem is. Right. You know, I thought about, uh, you know, you guys have often shared how, um, pro- and it might have been more as the kids were younger, you talked about, you know, at dinner times, you're very intentional to sit the kids down or have conversations and you kind of go through some questions mm-hmm. that really were the idea of the questions were to prime the pump to get conversation conversations going. Yeah. Um, and you were developing a relationship and, and you're developing habits within them to share with you to laugh, to talk about the day. Those are all great habits. But I bet you there was some days where it's maybe the kids wanted to do something else or just wanted to get through dinner and they're like, oh, sit down. Okay, this is what happened. This is my high. This is my low. And it's like because they, their mind is somewhere else. And I wonder if we approach God with the checklist of, all right, let me do yeah. this, 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 and that. When the whole reason for the systems or God designed some of these things, in this case, the parents, is because they're developing a relationship with the kid because absolutely really you're caring to connect right it wasn't so much the question right it wasn't so much the process it was like that was just the system to build and integrate these conversations yes but if we land on a system or you know you identify some points and we take it to god and go all right god i did boom 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 this is my day this is my high you know and i prayed right i read the bible when god's like man i just (laughs) this was my way of having this conversation with you because I yeah. want to get to know you. And, and I don't, I, I think how many of us as believers have been in that place. And that's what I think about when in this message, Pastor Dan, our attitudes mm-hmm. and actions going back to the idea. Right. And this is what the word of God is sharing with us. Right. Any, any kind of thoughts uh, as we kind of land the plane? I know we're going to go into other messages in the series yeah. Um, but just the heart of the takeaway. Any, how can you prepare us? You know, like, <laughs> oh, gosh, you know, uh, I think this is where all of us have to deal with that religious spirit that formalizes and legalizes what God meant to be relational. Mm. And so as we look at these things again, we, we've got three very practical points, but they were never meant, like you said, to be a, a you know, st- step one step two step three right. it's it's really an attitude mm-hmm. it's really a, a heart posture that positions us for the relational aspect of what we're doing not just for god with god mm-hmm. right uh, absolutely we're servants absolutely we're slaves of righteousness there's things that we do because god tells us to do it not because our flesh wants to but at the same time 
he is our father. He's our friend. I mean, there's some beautiful expressions in yeah. the word of God. Jesus is our brother. He's the captain of our salvation. I mean, there's, there's a, a gratitude for the things that he's done. And so um, in that, where we can see that our flesh would take the wonderful things that God gives us and formalize them and then legalize them. Mm -hmm. This is the way, this is the only way, this is how. These are the things, you know, um, Jesus encountered it when his disciples didn't wash their hands the right way, you yep. know, before yep. they ate. And he's going, guys, whatever you put in your body is just going to get taken out of the body. Right, it doesn't right. even go to the heart. It goes right. in the stomach. Right. And it's a physical thing. It's not even a spiritual thing. It's not mm -hmm. what goes in that matters. It's what comes out. Yeah. And I think, like you were saying, the fruit production, mm -hmm. what's coming out of our lives. As we look at those things, as we look at the attitudes behind them, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's where the rubber meets the road. We can identify those things. If, if I'm producing this fruit, even if it's religious, right, what's the attitude behind religion? Mm -hmm. The attitude is, is that I want to do this because I want to be right. Yep. And yet God offers righteousness to us through faith. If you're a believer, you're already right. Yeah. So because you're right, then you can produce what is right from inside. And that comes through the so abiding good. process, yeah. you know, not through the religious process. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's the different mindset. It's a pendulum shift. And it's hard. Mm -hmm. Believe me, I have a religious mind. Right. I have a religious right. a expression of my life. I was raised in mm -hmm. Christianity. Mm -hmm. And and my mind was, okay, this yep. is Christianity. This is how we do it. All right, then that's what I'm going to do. Not because of the heart. Right. Because of the... Man legalistic, this is the expression. And that wasn't put on me by my parents. That wasn't put on me right. by the churches. That was just my own experience. Yeah. And that, that's that's one of those things that we wrestle with. Just mm -hmm. as we wrestle with the moralists, you mm -hmm. know, that I'm, I'm better than they are, so it must be okay if I'm yeah. I'm not that good in these areas, but I'm still not this and right. not that. We justify our sin. The, the religious, it, 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 it's, it's empty, mm -hmm. right? It's a structure that the devil would love for us to set up because it disconnects us from God, yeah. but it keeps us in the deception of thinking, well, and I'm all right just because I've done these religious things. Mm -hmm. This next section of Scripture, we're, the Apostle Paul goes after it, just like he did the moralist. Yeah. You know, are you, are, you, are you doing this, and then yet you're doing the same things? He comes after it specifically and, and lists a whole lot of things that are great that we say, these are wonderful things. But then he goes, but then are you doing this, this, this? I mean, just calls them out, and yeah. it's like, whoa. Yeah. And I, th I think that, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to call some of those things out in us. Yeah. And, and that's where, even if it gets rough, you know, hey, lean into it, because God is obviously wanting to rid us of religion and get us into that relational aspect mm -hmm. so that we can learn, yep. do, yep. Come and on. grow with Him. Come on, Pastor. Wow. Is, is this going to be a two-parter, three-parter? You, you know, uh, at present, I think I'm about two. Okay. I don't know if there's a third part in there, so okay. I'm waiting on the Holy Spirit to reveal that to me. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to look forward. Again, if you want to read ahead, you can kind of see where we're going. Yeah. So starts talking. You know, he's still talking to the Jews specifically. and starts mm -hmm. talking about circumcision and uncircumcision and yeah. advantages, disadvantages, different things like that. So uh, we'll see where the Holy Spirit lands. Right now, I know there's a definitely you know, yeah. a second part coming. Um, I don't know about part three. We'll see. Good. Well, you got to stay tuned. Yep. Hey, we love you guys. Thanks again. Like, share, subscribe, whatever it is, man. We'd love to hear from you and God bless you guys. We'll see you soon.